Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Here we are. Friday Eve. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Um, hope you had a good day yesterday. I had a really good day yesterday. If you didn't see me running in the rain, might want to go back and watch that. <laughs> but I did. I sure did run in the rain yesterday morning. And then it got really cold. If you're here, you know that. We started out really warm, and then it got freezing cold, and I knew my dog was going to do that. Let me let him back in. Hang on, guys. All right. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. All right. So, we the name of the devotion today, the title is, When Things Get Worse Just Before They Get Better. When Things Get Worse Just Before They Get Better. We are in Seeing Beautiful Again by Lisa Tucker. So I always get somebody asking me, <laughs> Seeing Beautiful Again. Look it up, order it, get it. It's great. All right, when things get worse just before they get better, the key verse is Matthew 7, 24, and it says, Everyone who hears, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. If you're watching me live, give me hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me hashtag two. Here we go. So she says, over the last couple of years, I've watched my nearly 30-year-old home undergo several renovation projects. Renovations are not for the faint of heart. Has anybody went through a renovation project? <laughs> not for the faint of heart, right? The projects cause a mess. They cause mess. The results are sometimes slow to take shape. And the process can feel never-ending. And with each floor that's torn up, a wall that's removed, and plan that's put into motion, I'm paying attention. And as I've seen portions of our home demolished beyond recognition and put back together again, I'm learning that home renovations are so very similar to heart renovations. I've jotted down some important lessons I've collected from my renovation projects, and I want to pass them along from my journal to yours. Listen to this, guys, because it's, it's good. One, you have to tear some things down before you can build back up in new and beautiful ways. It's impossible to see true transformation unless you remove the damaged and unhealthy portions first. Houses and people are alike in this way. Sometimes we have to work through what was so we can move on to what can be. This doesn't always mean that we have to remove people who don't want to cooperate with healthier patterns for our relationship. This is important. That doesn't always mean that we are removing people. But it may mean that we create boundaries. <laughs> that clearly establish what behaviors are acceptable and what are not. Boundaries are not established to shove people away, but rather so we hold ourselves together, right? Number two, working on the foundation isn't the most appealing or attractive work, but it is some of the most important. Hang on. Y'all see this? <laughs> he's, he's deciding to eat his breakfast, I guess. Sorry, guys. Sorry if you hear my dog crunching away on this food. Um, <laughs> number two, <laughs> working on the foundation isn't the most appealing or attractive work, but it is some of the most important. Jesus spoke of this truth in Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the st streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Even though working on the foundation isn't the most glamorous part of construction, 
It is a crucial step. We can't skip. We can't, guys. I love how, she says, I love how Eugene Peterson paraphrased Matthew 7, 24, 25. It's the message version. And it says, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. Ooh, I like that version too, don't you? It was fixed to the rock. Man, nothing moved that house. Building our lives on anything but God's truth will result in a shaky foundation. It's true. A detriment to any building project before it even begins. We must put in the necessary hard work of building our lives and our faith on the solid grounds of Scripture through the consistency of daily seeking God. Consistency. Daily. And I know sometimes that makes us want to run away because we don't like commitment. We think that's just a bad word. But guys, embrace it. Embrace it. It's good. It's a good thing. Trust me. I promise. I promise. Number three, not everyone is going to like what you're doing. Not everyone is going to like what you're doing. And you have to be okay with that. That's my little addition part of that. You have to be okay with it, right? She says, change invites both compliments and criticism. Sometimes people criticize what they don't understand. Let me say that again. That's a word like typing out today. Sometimes people criticize what they don't understand. My counselor, Jim, often tells me people are down on what they aren't up on. While change is good, people who don't like change will be the last to call it good. Just remember what comes out of someone else's mouth is a reflection of their heart and not yours. Mm, that's good stuff right there, guys. Number four, it's good to stay humble enough to realize sometimes you need to get the professionals involved. It's good to stay humble Humble enough to realize sometimes you need to get the professionals involved. Some things you can't do on your own. And some things you can't. Some things you can do on your own and some things you can't. Many small repairs can be handled without the help of a professional. But most large renovations that require more major work must be handled with care by those who are skilled and experienced. The same is true with the deeper emotional work in our lives. There are, there are doctors, Christian counselors, and therapists trained to bring renewed health and restoration to both body and soul. My family and I have benefited greatly by bringing in the professionals in seasons when it was necessary. And we're so grateful we did. Number five, those who don't lose sight of the progress being made will find joy in the process. Let me say that again. Those who don't lose sight of the progress being made will find joy in the process. And it's always a process. Renovations often make things worse during the tear out and early construction phrase phases before things start to get better and more beautiful. The same is true with healing the human heart. Heart renovations, like home renovations, take diligence, patience, and a whole lot of prayer. But with God as our master carpenter, we can live assured in the process. We are a beautiful work in progress. Yes, we are. Track the progress you do see. Be patient with the setbacks. Celebrate the wins, even the small ones. Stacks of small wins turn into big wins. They do. And eventually, you'll be so glad you press through the renovation when you see the beauty that comes from all the hard work. And then she prays, God, help me have patience for the renovations you are doing in my heart. 
in the messy middle of the process. Help me see the beauty that has taken shape and the joy that can be found even here in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, the work, the process, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth the daily devotion. I'm telling you, God is doing something. He is stirring. He is moving. Man, He is He's wanting to fill your life and move in ways that you could never dream of. Get alone with God. Man, ask Him to fill you with His Spirit. And I'm not talking about... I, I, Yes, I want you saved. I want you given your life to Christ. I want all those things. I want that for you. Man, salvation. Jesus, only way to heaven, right? But while we're here on this earth, Jesus told his disciples, hey, I'm sending you another comforter. Man, it's the Holy Spirit, guys. He's going to fill you. He's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to feel all things. He's going to te be your teacher, your counselor. Whew, we need, we need the Holy Spirit to fill our lives. So ask him, invite him in while you're praying and you're seeking God. Say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me, fill me, the inside of me. Fill me to overflowing with this, with the Holy Spirit. I want to know He's there, right? Lead me into all truth. Guide me. I'm telling you what, he'll do it. He'll do it for you today. You don't have to wait any longer. He can do it while you're sitting there on your couch. He'll do it while you're in your car riding down the road. He will do it in your closet. He will do it in your bedroom. He will fill you. Just ask him. Ask him. Pray and seek his face. Have that daily devotion. Get up and seek God, and he will lead you in every part, in every area of your life for the rest of your days. I'm telling you, he's a good, good God. He is a good father. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Smile. We are blessed people. No matter what's going on out here around us, God has us, right? He does. He has us right in the palm of his hand. Just trust him today. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see y'all tomorrow on the EMJ Daily. Bye, guys.